This is Professor Pete Alexander with the Winning at Business and Life podcast, where business leaders share their insights. It is six questions in seven minutes because successful business leaders are busy and rarely have more time to spare. So let's get to it. Question number one in a few sentences. Please tell me who you are and what you do. My name is Christina Wise, and I have a money school that teaches everyone what we should have learned in college about money, but they didn't offer that class. And that's what I do by day. By night, I'm an investor and an Airbnb, Airbnb uh, host, I guess, a super host, and just really live a fun and exciting life about creating as much space through possible, passive income as possible to not be so busy. <laughs> Christina, it's so great to have you on the show. Question number two, what is something that makes you smile and or laugh about working in your industry? You know what I think? I don't know. If it, I mean, it's smiling in a way of, I find myself almost every day really amazed about something like money, how, how we just don't understand it. We don't know how it works. We're good at making it. We're good at spending it, but that's about it. So like every day I get a little chuckle, like, holy cow, like super smart people. We all are, but very few really understand how to play and win the money game. Mm -hmm. It's very true. Very true. Question number three. I have a fictitious book with all the answers for business. What chapter would you think most companies should read? Oh my gosh. Well, it depends like if you're a company or a business owner, if it's an entrepreneur, it's reading the chapter about your financials and understanding mm. the difference between income and profit and really going for profit first. And to and then to this reverse engineered back from a number that's how much, how much money is enough to live my good life? And then based on how much money does it take to live my lifestyle, now we can determine how much profit we need. Now we can turn into how much revenue we need. So versus starting at revenue and going that direction, we want to start at how much money is enough and then push that back up to determine how much revenue we want to build. Mm, I love that insight. That's so strong, especially because if you do it right, then you avoid all the stress that uh, the problems with money can create. So I'm assuming that's uh, uh, what you've had as, in your experience as well. Yeah. And I mean, many, I, I really focus on what I call micro business owners. So they're small, small mm -hmm. businesses. And what I find to be true for at least this category, but really many entrepreneurs is that their money, their, their business owns them. They don't have a lot of time freedom and ultimately they're still month to month. So it's just being in the hustle mm -hmm. for so long where each month you have to show up to pay that month's personal household bills. And then even in the business, it's reinvesting everything back, back on the business, betting on the come. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the natural progression of things unless we structure it and completely create it and build it differently. Mm -hmm. Very insightful, thank you. Question number four, other than the generic work harder, have a great attitude and care for customers, what advice would you give to other business leaders? I just go back to the same message, which is know your numbers. There's great. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do as a business and take care of our customers, provide better customer service, generate more business. But at the end of the day is to know how much money is enough, how much profit do we need to create and what's in it? How are we taking care of ourselves in the process and how are we building just a really solid, sustainable cash flow mm -hmm. for, our, for ourselves, our families and our legacies? Mm -hmm. So it's just taking the money a little bit deeper and understand why as business owners, are we in business? Yes, we have our offers to take care of customers and there's a lot of satisfaction at that. At the end of the day, we expend all this energy to have the financial and money currencies come back in the form of profit so that we do have and we can build that surplus and that space to be able to enjoy our life. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, our business is just onus as entrepreneurs. Right. It's it, it, it's like uh, I remember um, uh, talking with uh, people who used to talk about the fact that, oh, my business is just my job. And that's, you know, and I th I'm assuming that that's not the right attitude. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we do usually have a job in our business, but we don't want it. We don't want to own our business to own us, meaning mm -hmm. we're never free from it. I mean, a lot of mm -hmm. this, the thing is we need to systematize it and understand the know the numbers and the financial operations so that it's a business system that we own. And sometimes we're in it, but sometimes we can close it as well. I mean, if we want to go on a two week vacation, we can do that. Mm -hmm. But very few people set up their businesses that way. And a lot of that comes from not understanding their numbers and their financials and really running their business as a cash flow machine. 
Mm -hmm. Very insightful. Thank you. Question number five, what other business leader like yourself would you like to acknowledge and invite to be on my podcast? (laughs) You know, I thought about that one and I think somebody would be really good. His name is Mark Willis and he's got, you're not your average financial planning podcast. And he has a really great way and different way for, for good business owners and entrepreneurs to think about money and wealth and balance sheet and retirement. And it will just help the listeners start thinking about the future of their money as opposed to just like the presence of their business. Mm, Great. Well, thank you for that referral. I'll reach out to him. And our final question, question number six, please tell me about your first job. My first job outside of just being a kid that would do door knocking to sell Girl Scout cookies, you know, I kind of had the built in, you know, my parents didn't sell the Girl Scout cookies for us. I got all those badges because I wanted, I wanted the badges and I wanted to go sell those cookies. So obviously that, that payment, that first job was in the form of badges on on the lapel, but mm-hmm. but my first job outside of college was waiting tables. And I even remember like how that felt. It, at first it felt like, man, I have this college degree, I'm waiting tables. And I just felt, I don't know, a little bit ashamed that that's all I was doing, like mm-hmm. at the beginning. And it ended up being like one of the best learning experiences. I learned so much about customer service, managing time, counting change, believe it or not, making people happy, happy, being in the weeds and how to manage my emotions and how to handle other people's feelings. And so really, I even required that my kids wait tables Mm. when they were teenagers so that they could get that same type of experience that I think is actually really good experience, business experience that, uh, that, you know, is that learned thing from that first job. So yeah, I waited tables. Oh, I love that. And, you know, as you were describing that and all the different things, including the emotions, it reminded me of a quote that I saw that said that you can tell a lot about a person by how they treat the, their waiter, their server and stuff. So I'm assuming you probably had uh, a whole host of different personalities that you had to deal with in that job as well. Yeah, and you couldn't just like, you know, say what you thought when you got <laughs> treated terribly, you know, you get fired. So yeah, really managing all of those different types of personalities. And that's business. I mean, we have all different types of clients, all different types of employees. And yeah, I learned I learned so much for, for that year and a half of waiting tables. Mm-hmm. I bet. I bet. So Christina, thank you so much for being on the show. How can people find you? You know, the easiest way is Christina.com. And it's just, my name is spelled with a K and two S's when you think of Christina. And I've got some downloads and podcasts and all my work that I do. So yeah, it's easy for people to find me or just Google for that matter. (laughs) Perfect. This is Professor Pete Alexander with the Winning a Business and Life podcast. Thanks for listening.